Okay, Hasbro PulseCon 2022 just wrapped up over the weekend and there was a lot of reveals. So let's kick things off with Transformers and they revealed next year's legacy line to be Legacy Evolution. There's supposed to be a gimmick and it's sort of like an e Evo Fusion type of gimmick where you combine weapons or in some figures you can combine parts of the figures with each other. Uh, to be honest, I think this is just a corny gimmick that Hasbro kind of forced into it just so they can differentiate 2022 Legacy with 2023 Legacy. They had to call 2023 Generations Line for 2023 something different other than Legacy. So they called it Legacy Fusion. It's a corny gimmick, but okay, we're going to go with it. They revealed the official poster or official artwork, which will probably be appearing on most of the back uh, art of the back of the packaging for most of these figures and there's a lot of figures that's been hinted here uh, some of them they were revealed but if you look closely at the poster you will see Tarn's face right here you have two Optimus Primes I think is this a laser Optimus Prime I think it's is it gonna be a repack or are we gonna see a new version of laser Optimus Prime uh, hopefully it's a, still a leader class and they don't give us like a deluxe class laser Optimus Prime. I don't know. This one looks to be Armada Optimus Prime, which I think is probably going to be the new commander class figure for next year, which is great. I've been looking forward to getting a new Armada Optimus Prime since I didn't get the original one, which I'm still trying to track down, by the way. I, I have a lead on uh, authentic original Takaratomi uh, leader class Armada Optimus Prime. If I have enough funds, I'll probably get it. Then we see who is this? Uh, is this Skids? Or no, this is Breakdown. Breakdown, okay, obvious we're gonna get bre Breakdown. There's Leo Prime looking very realistic, <laughs> not a cybernetic uh, lion. You get Needle Nose, you get this is this gotta be a uh, crosscut, Senator Crosscut. And then more Dinobots, and it's weird because I think these are core class Dinobots. I don't know why they're doing it. We'll talk more about that later. We get more of the Junkions, and more Junkions here. We get Insecticons, you get Hotshot, and in the background, right over there, you get the Nemesis, and is that the Nemesis? I think that's the Nemesis, or the Autobot ship that they stole. And this one is the Junkion ship. So are we getting Titan class versions of those ships? I hope not. I hope they're just part of the artwork because I mean, I wasn't too interested with the arc as a Titan class figure, but uh, I'll probably be not interested with those either. So I don't know, who knows? Only time will tell. Hope Here's hoping for the best to come in 2023. Okay, so this is more of a recap. They've gone full on reveal mode for the two pack hero is a hero is born alpha trion and orion packs which is just cup and scourge molds redone it's understandable those are the best molds that they can use for this with the vector sigma onto the reveals we get core class dinobots to me this is a, this is weird why are they doing dinobots for the core class i mean there are a ton of other figures they can still do for core class, like the season one cast of the Autobots and Decepticons. There's still a lot more to be done. I don't know why, I don't know why they jumped into the uh, Dinobots. Uh, probably one of the designers was eager to make a combiner team for uh, Volcanicus or whatever, but it's not looking good. Slag is, I don't know, it's okay, but it's not great. If you look at the dino mode, it's horrible. It's a horrible looking slag figure. It's It looks like a paperweight. Then we have sludge. Oh my goodness, this is even horrible. It's a big, big mess. Why do they even try to do it if they can't do it properly, right? I mean, I know it's a core class figure, but I mean, come on, man. Put some effort into it at least, or otherwise just don't do it. Even this alt mode, it just looks ridiculous. It's it's like uh, it's like one of those rides in, in the carnival that the kids hop on and it goes like around in a merry-go-round. That's the kind of thing I'm getting here. And then we get, this is an obvious repaint. We knew it was coming. I mean, reusing this mold is probably the most logical thing they could do. We get Sound Blaster in the core class line. Okay, I, I get it. I'll probably get this. I think I have it already on pre-order. So pretty good. Actually very impressed the way the colors came out. Alt mode, well, what do you expect? It's still gonna be the same alt mode as Soundwave. It's still gonna have those feet sticking out. 
I just wish they could have improved it. I mean, it just needs a little bit of tweaking. They could fix those legs totally. I mean, there's a third party kit for that, but I mean, Hasbro should have taken a hint uh, from that third party company. They should have fixed it on their own, but okay. And then we have Breakdown. Finally, the last member of the Stunticons making his way. And to them, I heard one of the uh, designers talk about this uh, on PulseCon that this is part of the Evo fusion gimmick. Like the spoiler can become a weapon. I mean, come on, how? That's probably the lamest thing that they said all throughout the reveals. I mean, come on, man. A removable spoiler, that's your gimmick. Okay, you can see here that they've repurposed a lot of Wild Riders parts, particularly the half of the front half of the car, which kind of sucks. Uh, they could have done a better job with that, I think. They could have retooled it, but uh, you know Hasbro, they love reusing parts. And uh, they're both legs, they form the leg parts of Nanosaur, so I guess it kind of makes sense that they will both be very similar to each other, unlike drag, uh, drag strip and dead end. Okay, and then we have Hotshot. Finally, a decent looking Hotshot from the Generations line. Uh, we've had, what, two versions of Hotshot in the Generations line? Was it two? And this is the third, or this is just the second one? Uh, I might be remembering another thing, but it looks so close to the, to the Armada version and it's been given the Generations feel, and I like it. I have some reason I'm liking this figure. The head sculpt looks great. I think that visor can move down, which is also amazing. Lots of nice paint apps. I'm hoping the quality of the plastic won't suck. I mean, come on, Hasbro. I mean, you've done a great sculpt. Please follow through with plastic quality. The car mode looks okay. Uh, some inconsistencies here and there, but it's good enough. And then we have a new Junkion. This is, I don't know what his name is. Uh, scrap hook I think is that is that his name scrap hook because he's got a hook uh, it looked great I thought it was very very promising I, I was thinking yes another junkie on so it doesn't have to be just a repaint of Rekgar and all that it's a completely new mold the head sculpt looks absolutely fantastic even the car mode the uh, what is this the pickup uh, tow truck uh, car mode looks great why does he have an exhaust coming from his wheels? That That is weird. Anyway, but he's a junkie on so he could do anything, right? And then I saw the back part of the packaging and it clearly shows that this figure is going to be a modular weaponizer and my heart just sank and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. They said it, he transforms without, remo without being a parts former. He could transform without, being, without removing or disassembling him. But the fact that he's a parts forming combined mode gimmick I'm, I'm just not into this and <laughs> when I saw that I completely lost excitement for this figure I reckon this is going to be a peg warmer easily peg warmer of the wave let's take a quick look back at hotshot very quickly you can see right here he's got a cannon mode uh, with the wheel and the axle of the wheel I thought that was interesting I thought that that was great fan service for those who had the original a hotshot figure from the Armada line. This is a great homage to that, and I, I'm glad they're trying to get uh, the figures as close to the original and yet giving it a very good Generations feel. And then we get Needle Nose. I say, finally, I'm thinking, yes, we finally get another Target Master. And he's got those bricks again for Target Master weapons, and he's a deluxe class. Interesting. I'm thinking maybe they should have turned him into a Voyager class so that uh, they could do a better job with the Target Masters, but I reckon Hasbro's gonna stick it with a deluxe class for these Target Masters, just like what they did with Titan's Return. He looks great. He's got that G1 vibe to him and a lot of fantastic articulation from the way the picture's been rendered. Now we get him in jet mode. Wow, look at this. I mean, I'm not even complaining that there's so much cable downstairs, but it's so G1. So, okay, kudos to Hasbro for trying to put some effort to giving us a G1 version of this figure. And like I said, more bricks. Uh, they could have easily put some articulation on this. It wouldn't have cost so much, I think. But the paint apps are pretty good, so you can't complain too much about these figures. And then we have Leo Prime. He looks great. I, I'm so glad I didn't get the Masterpiece version because that was so expensive. Uh, and this one, 
kind of looks like a small scaled down size version of the masterpiece with a little bit extra kibble here and there uh, from the arms but the whole torso the head sculpt even the legs overall looks great 80 percent of this one looks phenomenal just not sure how i'm gonna feel about those kibbles uh, the animal kibble i'll have to wait till i actually get this figure and review it uh, before giving final thoughts here's his very ultra realistic lion mode uh they've they've turned him into a beast wars character uh well technically he is but he's in the anime continuity so a little bit curious why they made him a little bit too realistic should have been a cybernetic lion if i recall but uh we'll give it a chance we'll give it a shot uh it looks great though i mean as a if he were to appear like you know some time traveling and he just popped up in season one of beast wars he could actually totally fit in and then we have the djd enforcer himself tarn i was shocked that they actually did this i mean they've been trying to put in some comic book uh figures here and there but to do tarn wow kudos to the designers and he's a voyager class figure so he looks very very solid look at that tank mode very very awesome and i hear they're going to redo this as a bludgeon i mean bring it on hasbro i'm all for this i'm just hoping they don't scrimp on the quality of the plastic from the way the render looks it feels that it's premium plastic but uh fingers crossed uh that it, this is not just a uh one of those like marvel Legends stunt that they did with uh gore the god butcher that the render was completely different from the actual product so Hoping it's this premium. It really lo will look this premium in, in actual. You know, once we get it, once we get the actual toy. Okay, and one of the final reveals that they did was a shattered glass sound wave that uses the Netflix uh, Earth Earthrise Earth mode uh, sound wave with a new head sculpt. And they've even given the same. Uh, what was it? The same or different? Uh, no, I think this is the Siege version of of these two uh, figures, if I recall, because I know the Earthrise laser beak didn't have the uh, vehicle mode type of head. It had the eyes. So this could be the Siege versions uh, of these minions, but doesn't matter. As long as we're getting the Netflix version, I'm all for it. It looks great. Oh, definitely. I just hope that that white plastic doesn't yellow in like, what, a week's time or two? I mean, after I review this thing, it is immediately going to be stored in a bin. I'm going to put it in a very dark spot and hope hope to the uh, AllSpark that it does not turn yellow. Okay, so that's it for Transformers reveals for PulseCon 2022 Legacy Evolution. If you just came here for the Transformers reveal, that's it. The video is over for you guys. Do let me know in the comment section what you think of these reveals. And I'll catch you guys on the next Transformers video. Thanks so much for watching. Now, if you still want to hear my thoughts on the action figure reveals, particularly the Marvel Legends, uh, G.I. Joe Classified series and Star Wars Black series, please keep watching and uh, we'll get to those figure reveals in a bit. Okay, let's go with Marvel Legends. I think this figure is already out in some parts of Asia. I'm not sure. I hear in the Philippines, we're hobby shops are supposed to get this by the end of the month. So... This is a reveal and they say pre-orders are going to be up soon, so okay, but it looks great. It is a retro version of the, is it the 90s cartoon Iron Man? I remember I had the Toy Biz version of this one, just the figure actually with some of the guns and it had that back metal chrome uh, paint on some of the armor pieces. If you, you know what I'm talking about, you tell me in the comment section, but this one comes with the Capcom uh marvel uh versus capcom was it marvel versus Cap capcom versus marvel but the uh the video game the arcade game marvel versus capcom i think the uh proton gun and this was really nice i i've seen some 3d printed uh third party versions of the proton gun but this one actually looks great my only gripe with this figure uh which uh probably the reason why i've not actually go gone ahead and pre-ordered it is the blast effect i mean seriously the proton gun how can you have a teeny tiny blast effect for that proton gun i mean for those of you who played the game i think i did play that game when i was in high school it had a huge like, you could decimate your opponent with that 
they could have skipped these blast effects. They could have completely eliminated it, used the plastic to create a bigger blast effect. Uh, I have no idea why they didn't do that. I mean, come on, Hasbro. Really? A teeny tiny blast effect for a for huge gun. This is a fail. I'm serious. For me, that will totally bring down the ratings for me for this figure, but we'll have to wait and see. If I do find it on retail or maybe at a hobby shop and I still have the funds for it, I might probably go ahead and pull the trigger <laughs> on this figure. Seriously, Hasbro, come on. Stop convincing us that that's a proton gun <laughs> with that measly teeny tiny blast effect. Okay, and on to the X-Men. Ah, man, this is a bad time to quit collecting X-Men. I just recently quit collecting the X-Men and here comes Hasbro trying to lure me back, trying to suck me back into that black hole with these reveals. You got the retro Dark Phoenix and I'm kind of glad they did this. That will severely bring down the prices of that Toys R Us 2 pack. Oh, come on. It's like selling for what, 300 bucks right now online? Come on. So kudos to Hasbro for trying to do this. They're giving us the new mold. Hopefully it's a good one. If I see it, this one on retail in the wild, if I'm lucky enough to see it, I might not be able to resist and get it. I don't know, but we'll see. Then we have Spiral. This one, I can, you know, honestly, if I see it on retail, I might not be able to control myself. I'll probably go ahead and purchase this because I've never had Spiral. This is one of those figures I wanted to get. The old Hasbro figure is like going for bananas right now. It's like, what, $150, $200 online? So this one is great. That will severely bring down the prices of that figure online. And it, I think it, I don't know if it repurposed that figure, but it feels like it's a brand new mold. And if I'm lucky enough again to see this on retail in the wild, I'm telling you now, I probably can't, won't be able to resist and I'll probably get this because this is just one thing I wanted so badly years ago that I couldn't get and now it's here and what a crappy time to quit collecting X-Men, right? Anyway, and we have Longshot. No, this one's an easy pass for me. I, it looks fantastic, but Longshot wasn't really one of my favorite characters in the X-Men. So th that was one of the reasons why I quit collecting X-Men because there were only a few figures that I really liked 100%, but I was kind of forced to get the entire lineup of X-Men just to complete the team. Even if the figures weren't 100% with me, I was forced to kind of get it and keep it. And I didn't like that. I didn't like trying to buy non-100% figures just so I could complete the team's lineup. So I decided, you know, screw it. Let's just quit collecting X-Men. Uh, Jamie Madrox as the multiple man. This is great, actually. This is really, really nice. He doesn't have the trench coat. This is, I, I believe, one of his first appearance or was this an x-factor was he already with x-factor with this one no no he had the trench coat when he was with x-factor this is uh i think before he joined up x-factor or after he joined x-factor i'm not sure uh it looks to be an older version if if my memory serves me right i mean when i read up on on this guy i think this was one of his first outfits let me know in the comment section if this was before x-factor or after x-factor but he looks great uh he's using the new mold Oh my goodness, but uh, no, no, it's a pass for me. Avalanche, if you're completing your Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, definitely a must have, but no, not for me. Wolverine, oh my goodness, this is the Jim Lee era Wolverine where they all had that yellow and blue suit. It looks great, but easily this is going to be the peg warmer of the wave. Oh man. The artwork is so Jim Lee, and this is what got me into comic books. So, I don't know. I don't know. I have to be strong and just pass on this figure. And then Hasbro drops another bomb. The VHS Cyclops. We knew this was coming, right? And I was thinking they were just going to redo the Love Triangle uh, version of Cyclops or maybe the uh, Warlock Wave. But no, Hasbro had to bust out a new mold, give it some dope paint apps. I mean, I don't even mind the cell shading, honestly. And I'm telling you guys right now, this is the figure that's gonna suck me back into collecting Marvel Legends, particularly the X-Men. This is the figure. I was, I try to be strong. I completely ignored all the pre-orders listings uh, from local hobby shops of this figure. But I'm telling you, if I see it at a hobby shop, maybe on retail, I don't think I can resist getting this figure. I think I'm gonna buy it on site. 
because it looks great. One of my favorite characters of the X-Men and in the comic books, I drew a lot of Cyclops uh, sketches when I was reading Jim Lee, uh, Wills Portacio. I mean, come on. I, <laughs> I don't want to get this figure, but I think I'm going to have to. Come on, man. I mean, Hasbro, don't do this. I just quit X-Men. I just quit Marvel Legends and they come back with this. And don't you just hate it? It's like when you're trying to quit uh, a vice you're trying to quit an old habit and your buddies just keep teasing you this is a clear classic example of how you're trying to quit a habit and here comes your bad influence buddies trying to present you with something that you can't resist that's the luck to me when i when i see this figure on the shelf then we have daredevil electra in the bullseye three pack this is a great great three pack if you're so into daredevil you read up on the comic books and you collect the marvel legends this is an absolute must-have you have extra head sculpts for bullseye and electra electra done in the in the white uh, uniform i think sh this was a figure that lost the fan vote uh it lost to silk but it looks amazing and then you have daredevil with the Billy Club with, with the bendy wire? Is it a bendy wire or or not? I, I don't know, probably not. But knowing Hasbro, they're gonna go cheap. It's not bendy, but still, for them to actually have that kind of prop put with Daredevil and Daredevil sporting the new, uh, it's the new buck, I think. Yeah, it's definitely the new buck. That's the uh, Renew Your Vow Spider-Man and it looks phenomenal. I'm really trying to be strong not to pre-order this one, but just like Cyclops, if I see it on the shelf, I might not be able to resist. I'll probably still be able to resist this one. Uh, I'll probably be a lot stronger to resist this one, unlike Cyclops, which I'll probably just cave in, but it looks amazing. I mean, probably one of the better versions of Matt Murdock as a Daredevil. Look at that Electra. I mean, I think Hasbro felt quite insecure with a lot of these uh, customizers. These uh, there, are, there are these a lot, lot of collectors nowadays. They post stuff on Facebook of of their own versions of the these big haired head sculpts. I think Hasbro got insecure. They decided to do their own version. It looks amazing, and man, what a sculpt for Electra. And then Bullseye. I could care less for this guy, honestly. Uh, I love the colors. I love the way it turned out. I think it's a new mold as well. Great, great sculpt, man. Come on. Yeah, the alternate head looks amazing on Bullseye. Okay, let's move on to G.I. Joe. Thank goodness that was just, that that's it for Marvel Legends. I probably wouldn't have survived if they revealed more X-Men or more Avengers, I don't know. They did they did tease an Avengers wave coming out, but I'm honestly not interested with the character, so great. All right, G.I. Joe Classified Series. There's a ton of reveals right here. First up is a name reveal, and they, they said Hawk. Oh, thank goodness we're getting Hawk. That is one character that's clearly a no-brainer. I don't understand why it took them forever to actually do it. I mean, they, they did Mindbender, uh, Croc Master, they did Outback, but not Hawk? Come on, man. But so glad they're, they plan on doing it. I hope it's it's the good version. It's like the classic version with the jacket and the helmet. And uh, well, if they do the street, uh, street camo with the jetpack, that could work too. Uh, but I'm hoping they do the one with the, the classic look first. So fingers crossed they do the uh, the bomber jacket for the helmet. Okay, so they did reveal a bunch of new characters. Look at this, fantastic classic figures. Sadly, I'm not interested in any of these. I mean, Shipwreck was one of my first figures, the 3.75 uh, vintage figures. Those were, He was one of my first figures, but I never really liked him. Never liked the character. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I had it. I, I, ha I, I remember clearly he was one of the figures I got for, for my birthday. One of my birthdays back then, I think I was like, what? I turned nine or 10 or something like that. Uh, I, I, I was just probably curious that he had a parrot and that, you know, it was funny on the show, but after a while, I, I, I didn't really like him anymore. So this is a pass for me. Torpedo. He's great, but I'm gonna wait, wait for a wetsuit uh, figure. Uh, I love Torpedo, but 
between the two divers or seals, I, I'm partial to wetsuit, so I'm just gonna wait for wetsuit. And I'm pretty sure they're going to repaint or redeco this guy to wetsuit. Rock and roll, this guy looks amazing, but it's a little still too modern for me, the way he looks. I will probably wait for the Walmart exclusive carded version of rock and roll, the one that he's in all greens, and um, yeah, the, the one that the more classic looking rock and roll, that's probably what I'm gonna wait for and, and skip this one. Okay, Copperhead, no, not really my thing if they don't have the moccasin. Is it the moccasin? What, the, yeah, the hydrofoil or a boat, uh, the, the Cobra boat or something. Uh, you know, without that boat, I don't think it's worth getting this figure, sorry. And then Bazooka. Bazooka's great. I mean, he's funny on the show, but not one of my favorite Joes. I know, I know, I'm one of those weird guys who don't collect the original Joes. I mean, he's great together with Alpine and Footloose, but I never, I, sorry, I really just don't have an affinity for those guys. Those three guys were, they were fun in the cartoon, but... I don't think it's for me, so I'm gonna have to pass on this one. Uh, Slaughter's Marauder's version of Barbecue. No, I never got the original one. I'm really into Barbecue, I don't know why. I think it's a great looking figure, but sorry, this one's a pass for me. The Red Bat or the Crimson Bat, no, sorry. I didn't even get the Python Patrol version of the Cobra Bat, so this one's a pass for me, easy. And then we have Falcon, oh my goodness. This is an automatic pre-order for me, definitely. I'd already put my pre-order in. One of the figures I was looking forward to getting and then Outback. Thank goodness I was strong enough and I resisted getting the, the, the Tiger Force Outback because this is the Outback I want. I had the original Outback back in the day before it, it got busted up and all that because I, I brought that figure everywhere I went. One of my favorite all-time figures for G.I. Joe is Outback. I just love the character. I love the figure and I'm so glad we're getting the classics version. And this is like the... Uh, is this a Walmart exclusive? I don't think so. I think it's just a regular version. Thank goodness. Cannot wait to get this figure. It was an automatic pre-order for me. Then we have Cover Girl. And I wasn't sure I was going to get this figure, but man, I saw the pics. She looks great. I cannot wait to get this one. I immediately pre-ordered this one. All we need now is a big vehicle uh, for her, like the bridge layer. Oh my goodness. If we get that, uh, we can actually put her in it or the Havoc. Man, Hasbro needs to step up and give us more vehicles and not Haslab vehicles, okay? Just regular vehicles uh, for this line. Serpentor, this was already revealed in San Diego Comic-Con. Man, I pre-ordered this. Even if it was like, what, 80 bucks here in Manila. It was crazy, crazy price. It should be like, what, 60, 70 bucks? But here it's like 80, 85 bucks pre-order. I just had to pull the trigger on this one. This is one of those Cobras that you just need to pick up. He's got a great air chariot and the figure just looks phenomenal. So great, great reveals for G.I. Joe. I'm so glad there was only a few of the figures I really needed and I pre-ordered immediately. The rest of the figures are a pass for me. All right, on to Star Wars. Lots of reveals. Uh, but this time we're just going to focus on Black Series. I've already quit collecting 3.75 inch figures, so we'll stick primarily to Black Series. This was revealed in Comic-Con, I think, or yeah, in Comic-Con. And uh, Andor and B, this is an exclusive. Uh, it looks great, but sadly, uh, I think I'm gonna be skipping this one. I mean, this figure looks phenomenal. He's gonna be released as a single card, as a single figure, single package figure, but um, I think I'm, I'm gonna pass on this figure. And then we get Bix. Bix was actually my favorite character on the show. Uh, I do hope we see more of her and not just in the first three episodes, but the figure was a little disappointing. I love the head sculpt of, of Ardia, Arjona. I think it's great, but the lack of soft goods on this figure just turned me off. I'm sorry, but I, I think we're already past this. I mean, you've already given us uh, soft goods capes, Jedi robes and all that for the Kenobi figures. I mean, this should have been soft goods. I don't know why they didn't do it. Uh, was it was it too costly to do soft goods? They should have given us a soft goods version of this figure. Okay, uh, we get Luthen. I love, seriously, I, I love this guy on the show, but... Uh, no, I think I'm gonna pass on this figure. Juan Mothma, I thought she was great also on the show, but uh, no, no, 
I, I don't think this figure is necessary for my collection. And then we get a pre-order look, or was it a, a reveal of Axe Wolves? Uh, the wave is already out here in Manila and in some parts of Asia, so I don't know why this thing is still on pre-order. <laughs> Uh, maybe we got lucky and we got it early, but uh, well, the figure looks great, definitely, but I don't think it's for me. They teased uh, pipeline figures for the upcoming 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. I'm very excited for this, but uh, I'm kind of glad we're getting a, a lot of repacks, so I don't have to really pick and pre-order a lot of the figures. We get the uh, Biker Scout Trooper. Honestly, I don't know why they're selling this as a single figure. Uh, he should always come with a bike. So, no, it's a pass for me. We got Lando Calrissian in the uh, Skiff Guard disguise. He was just released in the archive line, so uh, this is gonna warm the pegs, I'm pretty sure. And then we get the Han Solo. I think this is the exact same figure we got for the convention exclusive. I think he was also released in a single pack. Uh, no, I had this figure, I, I've let him go. I've already sold him off. I don't think I need it in my collection. Princess Leia, I still have the one from the three from the three pack or the the Comic Con pack, so I don't think I need this one. Wicked, wow, this one's very tempting, but for a really small figure, it's priced the same as the bigger figures. And that's a big turn off. I think the pre order for this one, I think, is probably going for forty bucks out here in Manila. I'm not sure. I haven't actually seen a pre order, but the rumor is it's at least going to be forty bucks. So. I don't know. I love Wicket, but I'm, I don't love him enough to actually get the figure, so this is, might be a pass for me. Okay, so now we have more Star Wars Black Series pipeline reveals. We have the Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker. This one badly needs a redo, so I'm hoping we get a very good version of this one. Hopefully one with a Jedi cloak. Hopefully one with a very good head sculpt. I mean, they've, they've had a hit or miss on the Luke Skywalker Mark Hamill head sculpt. I mean, they've got, they've not had a perfect version of Mark Hamill's head sculpt. So I'm hoping this one will be the perfect Luke Skywalker. Then we have the Return of the Jedi, removable helmet, Darth Vader. Come on, Hasbro, you better give us a better version of this figure. I hope they don't repack the blue line. Oh, come on, if they do that, I'm gonna hate Hasbro. I'm gonna hate this, this series altogether. They need to give us a new mold. Uh, soft goods, definitely new soft goods, new head sculpt for this figure, new lightsaber. Just put all the bells and whistles for this figure. This is Darth Vader. Don't recycle anything, man. I hope you get a brand new mold. I mean, if they sell it as a deluxe figure, I'm all in. I will pay 50 bucks for this figure because I think that's what, that's what figures are going for now. The deluxe class figures are going for now here in Manila. 50 bucks or something like that. So I win, I'm down to pay that kind of money. If they give us a deluxe version with a brand new sculpt of everything, lots of accessories and all that, bring it on Hasbro. R2-D2, do we really need another R2-D2? I don't. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, the, the Royal Guards, I actually sold off my Royal Guards and I'm kind of regretting it because they cost so much now on the secondary market. I still have my uh, Palpatine with the throne, so I kind of need like a couple of these guys. So this is, this is kind of a welcome thing for me, so I might just go ahead and get them again. Uh, no, uh, definitely. This is the Cad Bane I want. I mean, I passed up on the Clone Wars version of Cad Bane because I knew they were gonna do this. I had a feeling they were gonna do this version. This is the Cad Bane I want, and I'll probably pre-order this one, the Book of Boba Fett version. Oh man, he looks amazing. Sand Trooper, Tribe Leader, no, probably not. And oh my goodness, why is this thing still Pipeline? I thought they were already going to release this figure. Uh, the season two ending of the Mandalorian Luke Skywalker when he just, oh my goodness goodness he made minced meat out of all of those dark troopers come on hasbro why is this still a pipeline then they teased clone wars 20 years oh my goodness i hope they repack obi-wan kenobi i missed out on kenobi man this i need another i need that to be re-released if they release yoda that's probably what i'm gonna get i'm gonna get that yoda because they sold off the 
archive Yoda or the, uh, what was it, the Kenner carded Yoda that I had because it was just way too big. But if they're gonna do a Clone Wars Yoda, I am so down for that. Uh, huh, troopers, nope. That's it for Star Wars. Uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to get a, a lot. Just a few, I'm trying to cherry pick this line. I'm still trying to keep a healthy collection of Black Series figures, but really glad I'm strong enough to just keep it 100% and just get a few figures from this line. So that's it for Hasbro PulseCon 2022. Do let me know in the comment section what you guys think of the reveals that they showed for Transformers, Marvel Legends, Star Wars The Black Series, and G.I. Joe Classified Series. Sadly, those are the only figures I can afford to collect. I cannot do Ghostbusters Plasma Series or the Power Rangers Lightning Series or I don't think I can do Indiana Jones or Magic the Gathering or... Dungeons and Dragons, I don't know. I just, it's, things are just so expensive. If you saw my quitting Marvel Legends video, you'll know how I feel that it, it's, it's just very hard to keep up with this hobby. Just trying to keep it concise, keep it 100%. Let me know what you guys think uh, down in the comments. Hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.